Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Friday, everyone. Favorite day of the week because it's Masterclass Friday. For those of you who are new, my name is Terry White, photography um, evangelist here at Adobe. It's my pleasure to be streaming to you live once again. I see a bunch of people joining in both chats already. So Sheila Ferguson from um, from YouTube, great to see you here. And of course, all the people hanging out on Behance or Adobe Live over on Behance, b.net slash Adobe Live for those of you looking for that particular chat. And that is the main chat of the stream. So that's the one I pay attention to the most, but I will try and look at both windows as much as I can to make sure I don't miss anything. Today is a kind of not a part four of last week, which was part three of um, Photoshop Crash Course. But it is it does tie in. It, it's not going to be just Photoshop. It's going to be some Lightroom as well. And it's really about making selections, um, various ways to make selections and masking, tips and tricks. And for those of you who are uh, new to Photoshop, you'll gain from that because that's one of the key uh, things to be successful in Photoshop is being able to make good selections. And of course, there are a variety of ways to do it in both Lightroom and Photoshop. So with that said, um, this is Masterclass Friday for those of you who are new. If you're watching the replay, thanks for watching the replay. Uh, we do these every Friday whenever we can. And uh, it's all the evangelists talking about their various disciplines. So Photoshop, graphic design, photography, uh, audio video, digital painting and drawing, and Adobe Express. So with that said, and without further ado, for my last or for my remaining 52 minutes, let's go ahead and dive right in because I got a lot to cover. So like I said, we're going to start off in uh, Lightroom Classic. Uh, everything I'm going to show you can be done in Lightroom as well and even on mobile. Um, most of it can be done on mobile. Not, I'll, I'll get into the things that can't be done on mobile as easily. But anyway, most of it can be done on mobile. Uh, all of it can be done on Lightroom Classic or Lightroom Desktop um, cloud version. And with that said, let's dive in. All right, there's my desktop. Let's get rid of the banner. And let's go ahead and start off with a little bit of Lightroom Classic and talking about um, masking. All right, so masking uh, has gone through several, I, 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 three major um, ref, or, or iterations and big refinements. So the first level of masking was literally, um, you know, the adjustment brush, lineal, linear gr gradients and radial gradients. That was pretty much all you could do. So for example, if I wanted to take a subject like this and I wanted to do something to his shirt back in the day with iteration number one, it would be kind of painful because I'd have to go to, you know, it wasn't a separate masking thing, but I'd have to go to the adjustment brush and I would have to start masking in his shirt. And of course it's restrict, you know, if I overpaint or if I get some on his ear or get some on his neck, um, it's going to be affected. So I would have to zoom in and subtract and not get it on the areas I don't want it on. And there's an auto mask there to kind of help you go over to have you not go over the edges. But for the most part, masking, <laughs> I'm getting his hand in there. I'm doing this kind of sloppily on purpose. But for the most part, that was masking 1.0. That was kind of like you, you did your mask. And if you went too far, you held down the option or alt key and you kind of unmasked the areas. And it just, it wasn't a fun experience. And it was certainly tedious and time consuming to um, get a good mask in Lightroom back in the day. Luckily, those days are long gone and getting a good mask. <laughs> God, this is horrible. Uh, getting a good mask in uh, Lightroom is a lot easier. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm painfully doing this just to remind myself of how good it is now uh, to not have to do this. All right. So anyway, let's say that was your mask and you want, and um, by the way, I've switched my um, overlay color, which you can do. I switched mine to green. Normally it's red. So I'll put it back on what you see. So normally you would see that and that lets you know what you've got selected and what's not selected and how bad or good your selection is. So then if I were to go in and change, you know, the hue of his shirt or the exposure of his shirt, I could do those things once I got the mask done. 
But like I said, that was the pain of doing masking back in the day. Um, and, and that was really, the brush was really the only way you could get in and mask specific areas because the radial gradient and linear gradient were just circles and, and rectangles. So that wouldn't do anything for a shirt. It wouldn't do anything for him. It would just be kind of like if you wanted something specific like a person, you had to always brush it in. All right, so luckily, I'm going to hit reset, get rid of those masks. That's all gone. I'm going to get out of this image. We're going to kind of kick in and start from masking 2.0, then we'll get to map. And by the way, these aren't official terms. There's not really a masking 2.0 feature or a masking 3.0 feature. It's kind of what I call them. Masking 2.0 was the big uh, AI introduction of uh, selecting sky and subjects. And then masking 3.0 is a lot with people. So I'm just calling it those things. Uh, anyway, <laughs> glad you're a new age user. I bet you are, Maurice, because if you saw how painful that way, and I didn't zoom in and take my time, but I would have to zoom in and paint every little detail to get it just right and not overpaint onto the wall or overpaint onto a skin. So it would have taken some time to get that uh, just right with a brush. All right, so let, anyway, let's go in and let's say I just want to make an adjustment to the sky. Now, again, back in the day, I'd have, I'm not going to do it, but I'd have to go in and brush all the sky in between the leaves, in between the tree branches. Good luck, because you can see uh, with the shallow depth of field, the, the tree branches and all that, just a, it would be a mess to try and paint. Luckily, we don't have to do that anymore. So instead of me having to paint it, I'm going to go into the develop module once again, click mask, and I get some more. I get the new AI choices like select sky. So we introduced this uh, two years ago. So now when I just select sky, it just does it. So for example, now if I were to go in and say, hey, I want to add a little dehaze to the sky, and I'm, I'm cranking it up just so you can see the difference. But my sky gets a little dehazy. And if I wanted to uh, dehazy, if that's a word, I'm going to change the temperature to make it bluer. I'm going to lower the uh, exposure. I keep wanting to say opacity for exposure. And I can just dial that in and, and do a really good job with Select Sky. Now, perfect? No, most masks aren't perfect. But it will do a much better job than I would have had to do in a much faster time than I would have done by painting that in. Now, once you um, have a mask, you see that it defaults to calling that mask number one. And of course, the next one I create would be mask number two and so forth and so on. And the minute you get past two or three masks, it's gonna be hard to remember which one's which. So I'm going to um, uh, double click on mask number one and just call it sky so that I know what that mask is for. So always name your mask, especially if you're gonna have more than one because you, it's gonna be, the, the icons don't tell the story, so you're not gonna really be able to tell by a little thumbnail uh, what mask is what. So just, you can have more than one, name them so it gets a lot easier. All right, so now let's go into um, this one. So let's say I want to select this person and I want to warm, just add a warm tone to the overall person shot, their clothes, their skin, everything. So again, no more brushing. I would just simply go into masking and I would choose select subject. And just like that, it selects the subject. Select subjects really, every, every update makes it even a little bit better. So again, I've got it, uh, my, my overlay color is red. So it's showing me kind of a red overlay over the whole person. And now if I were to go in and adjust the temperature and make the temperature that's really warm, that's really cold, but just to show you what it's doing to the entire person. And again, just like that, I want to warm the subject up just a little bit without touching the background. Speaking of background, before, if you wanted to do the background, what you would do, this is um, between masking 2.0 and 3.0, uh, what you would have done, oh, this was actually back in 2.0. You would have selected the subject, because that was easier to select, and then you would choose invert to select um, to select the background. So if I say invert the mask, notice the warming happens on the background and not the subject. 
So now I've got the background selected and everything I'm doing is happening to the background and the subject's being left alone. So that was the way we used to do the background in the 2.0 days. Um, it was a, just a two-step process. Select your subject or select whatever, invert the selection, and then you get the opposite of what's selected, which in this case would be the background. There's a better way. All right, uh, let's go in and, and look at that better way right now. Uh, I've shown this image before. I've shown it for different masking techniques, but this one I'm going to use it to select background because uh, this, this person walking through this uh, outdoor market area, uh, the market area behind him looks kind of hazy and could look a, use a little dehaze and maybe a little lower exposure. But I don't want to touch him because he looks okay. He's, he's, he's properly exposed. So let's go ahead and uh, go to develop once again. Masking. And now there is, this is 3.0, there is a mask select background. Just instead of two clicks, it's one. Believe it or not, <clears throat> when this was introduced, there were some people actually complaining, saying, well, why would you make a background button? Because we can just select subject and invert. And whenever someone complains about a new feature and we didn't change the old way you do it, I always just remind them, you keep doing your two clicks. Nothing changed for you. If you want to keep doing it your old way, keep doing it your old way. I never understand the people that don't want progress. Anyway, uh, especially when it doesn't affect you if you don't really want to do it the new way. So select background, boom, one click, it selects the background. Now, it did leave out this, it always leaves out this little piece in this hand and I can uh, click on that mask and I can add to that uh, background by using any of the other tools. So I could get in there with a brush. I'm gonna make my brush much smaller, much smaller, and I can get in there and paint. There we go. So I just got that little piece in his hand um, uh, selected, now the whole background selected, and then I can go in and, and do my dehaze. So let's dehaze that background. That's a lot, that's none. Ooh, that's actually kind of a cool effect as well. I kind of like that, but that's not what I was aiming for. Let's go ahead and uh, just dehaze that background just a tad bit. And let's drop the exposure a tad bit more. And it just brings your subject to be more front and center. Um, so, yeah, people are basically, <laughs> Tanya, yes, basically do you, boo. Um, and, of course, um, <clears throat> yeah, people are, are just, you know, do it, you know, stuck in their ways, as, as someone just said, Anika just said. So if you're stuck in your ways, again, don't complain if your way didn't change. I can understand if your way changed, you might be upset because of the, you have to learn a new way. But if a new thing is introduced and it didn't take away from the old thing, the old way you did it, don't complain. Just keep doing it your way. All right, next up. Um... So that was the 2.0, basically the masking. Select sky, select subject, in addition to all the other ways we would mask. So same thing, select sky, select subject, didn't take away from brushing. If you like brushing, keep brushing. Didn't take away from linear gradient, um, uh, the elliptical, the color range, luminosity, didn't take away any of those things. It just added those AI features. Okay, next up. Let's keep going and let's talk about uh, the next one, which is one of my favorites. And it was something about it I didn't know right off the bat. Um, actually, before we do that, let's get in. Okay, before we go to 3.0, let's, let's go to one more 2.0 feature. I'm going to do, I think I'll do it on this one. I want to get his his sweater, shirt, sweatshirt, whatever. Um, I, I'm going to go in, masking. I was just thinking about how I was going to do it. Masking. And then I'm going to go in and choose. Now, like I said, didn't take away the linear gradient, radial gradient, but there's also this range pop-up. And this range pop-up gives you the three range ways of doing it. If you had a depth, depth map, you can use depth range, but it's luminance or color range. So I'm going to click color range. Now that I got color range selected, I get this little eyedropper. So the eyedropper works in one of two ways. You can click it, click a color you want. 
you can drag it to make a area selection of the colors you want because maybe the colors vary, which they do. You can also set up to five areas. So if it's like a lot of different colors throughout, you can set those five areas. So I'm just going to drag a little rectangle right here and it will select that. Now notice it also is selecting like a little of his face, a little of his head. I'm not sure why because his hair doesn't look blue. But I can keep clicking and try and deselect that, but it's really not doing a good job. So although it did select it, I could um, bring down, uh, bring down, oh, that's the amount slider, sorry. I can <laughs> refine the selection uh, and try and bring it down a bit so that it's not selecting that. And let's see what that gives me. And then if I want to change the color of a sweater, there we go. I can. So I can make a sweater green now or purple or maroon or whatever color I want. And that will let me select based on color range. So all of those selection methods, way easier than brushing. And if you need to brush, you can add or subtract from a mask using a brush just to do the little piece you need, as opposed to having to brush the whole thing from scratch. All right, I'm going to reset this one because I'm going to come back to this one in a minute. Okay. Um, next up is one, I was going to say one of my favorites, which is selecting objects. So let's go back to the, the girl throwing a Frisbee here. And she's got a nice orange Frisbee and she whispered in my ear and said, I really wish that Frisbee was red. I've said that joke before. And um, before, again, you'd have to brush the Frisbee and then change the color. Now we don't have to do that because we have object selections, and this is part of 3.0. So if I go to my uh, develop menu, or develop uh, module, and I click on mask, there's the sky that was still there, create a new mask, and then it asks me, well, how do you want to create it? Now, we already learned about color range, but the problem is, if I were to try and just pick the orange and the frisbee, that kid in the back directly behind the frisbee looks like he's wearing some orange tone pants. So it would select his pants too. I don't want to do that. Um, I could brush it in. Definitely don't want to do that. And then there is a new objects choice. And the, this defaulted to a brush when, when it first came out. And I never noticed that there was another option. So I was using this the wrong way. Well, not the wrong way, but not the best way when it first came out. I was using it using the brush and, and it doesn't really you don't have to be as careful so let's say that i just want to i'm going to really not be careful and do that okay i don't even have to fill the whole thing in and then boom it, it like it guesses what you're trying to do very similar to the object selection tool in photoshop so i didn't even though i was way outside the lines wasn't careful at all i guessed i wanted the frisbee and now I can go in and do the same kind of thing. What did I say? She wanted a red one. Uh, where red is. Uh, that's more red there. Right there. And then we might drop the exposure to make it more red. And there we go. So now we got our, our kind of almost red pinkish frisbee. Okay. So um, object selection with a brush for the object selection tool works great. And it does, um, it does auto select. Even if you overbrush, you don't have to be very careful with the brushing. But let me undo that. Undo, undo, undo. Let me undo that mask and show you the better way to do this. When I discovered this, I think I discovered it in one of the master classes. I just looked over and saw the option. I was like, no, don't tell me I was doing it the, the hard way all this time. Uh, yep, so let's go ahead and click Create New Mask, Objects again. And what I happen to glance over and see is next to the brush, there's this. It's a little rectangle, a square. So this is okay. It works. Nothing wrong with it. This is way faster. So let's click the rectangle because this, again, works more like it does in Photoshop. So if I were to just grab the rectangle and drag around the Frisbee and let go, boom, done. Don't have to think about it. So brushing in, especially on a big object, can take a minute. 
dragging a rectangle, much faster and easier because it's using AI to figure out, oh, he probably wants the Frisbee since he drug around that object because it's the object selection tool. All right, so now again, once I go in and make changes, I can change it all the way and change it to blue or purple or whatever color I want, maybe match the pants. There you go, and it does a really good job. Now, keep in mind, uh, when I was teaching the uh, first one and two classes of the um, Photoshop crash course, I said, if you're gonna do this kind of stuff, you gotta make it look real. So here's the problem with this. This worked great on the Frisbee. But look at her sleeve. Her sleeve, if I were to grab my zoom key there, her sleeve is still reflecting the orange from the original Frisbee. So if you wanted to really make that look realistic, you'd have to go into Photoshop really and do this properly. Um, well, I mean, you could brush it in, I guess. You could brush that little piece in and change that color too. So um, just keep in mind that when you're doing things like this, changing colors, make sure you do a good job. And I noticed a little halo there, so I might wanna go and subtract that little halo around it. Um, but anyway, just, Keep that in mind that that reflection on her or that sun shining through the orange frisbee onto her sleeve is orange. That would also need to change to blue. Okay, that's that's one case of the object selection tool. Let's get out of this and let's go to this one. Same thing here. Uh, this this these there, these two guys are wearing hats. This guy isn't. Uh, if I wanted to change this one hat. To a different color or a different shade or anything about it i could go into the object selection tool masking uh, objects and i could brush it but much easier to just do this and even if i don't get it all it kind of figures out oh you must want the hat so it got the hat um dun, 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 dun. i it didn't get the yeah i said that it didn't get the fine edges and i said you would go in and just kind of brush that out um all right so let's go in and dun, 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 dun. there we go so now i'm changing the hat to maybe a different color i, I like the original color best for that but yeah none of these colors kind of suit him and especially with what he's wearing but anyway, uh, you, you can go ahead and change the hat. So let's go in and uh, that's the object selection tool and, and see how it even worked around his fingers. Uh, hold on, da, 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 da. there we go. Worked around his finger. Look how good of a job it did around his fingers and got in, in there and did just amazing. So no mask is perfect. You might need to go in and, and <laughs> when in doubt, go purple, that's right. Um, you might want to go in and, and just check it and refine it if you want to with a little bit of brushing on the edges, but that's, you know, this one came out much better. Okay. Um, what about more stark or colder pictures? What about them? Um, I don't know what you mean. Like I, I get what stark and color colder pictures are, but what about them? Um, Okay, and keep in mind that uh, I'm using hue to make the changes. You also have color to go in and make changes as well. So if you're trying to, um, if the color you if you're not getting the exact color you want with hue, you can also bring up color to do it. Okay, let's jump out of that one, and now let's get into the big new thing with um, selecting. Uh, masking 3.0, which is selecting people. Um, is that Jarvison? Um, I love the training videos. I cannot tell you how much they have uh, helped my studio work. I'm glad I could help you. And hopefully I pronounced your name right or your studio name right. Uh, good afternoon from Denmark. Hello, uh, Hassan and JP. Great. Okay, moving on. Uh, what was I going to say? People. So I skipped over this one. I skipped over these two for a reason. I'm going to come back to these now. Um, when you wanted to change aspects of a person, 
their skin, um, their eyes, their lips, their face skin versus body skin, their hair, their eyebrows, all of those things used to be manual painting. So if you, I got to really fix the color you guys are seeing on your screen. I'm, I'm just glancing at the replay or the uh, live stream now. You guys are getting way more saturated colors than what I'm seeing on my screen. So I got to tweak the, uh, the capture card for this thing. Anyway, um, just note your colors are way more saturated than what I'm looking at. All right, so next up. So let's say that I wanted to change just, for example, just her lipstick color. Something simple. Before, that would mean brushing her lip. Um, and isolating and masking feels a bit more difficult. I guess you mean on more stark or colder pictures or, or I'm doing it wrong. Well, again, the AI stuff shouldn't matter the tone. It should still select subjects and skies. And in this case, people even on colder, um, colder images. So let me know if that's not the case. All right. Uh, all right, so again, where was I? I said it to people. Let's go to develop. Now, when you click masking and there's a person or multiple people, it will automatically detect people. It doesn't know their names. So it calls person one, person two, person three. How many ever people you have in there, it'll, it'll try and identify them all. So there's only one person in the shot, so it called her person one. And if I click on that, and I say entire person, that's really, in this case, would give me the same result as select subject. But notice I have all these options now. Face skin, body skin, eyebrows, eye sclera, which is the, I didn't really, I didn't know what that term meant. It's the whites of the eyes. Iris and pupil, of course, is the pupil itself. Lips, teeth, and... Um, if something is grayed out, by the way, that usually means because it's there, like she, her teeth are showing, but I've seen like teeth be grayed out if the mouth is completely closed because there's no teeth to select. All right, so let's say I do lips and you can check off more than one thing. So if I wanted to change the lips and her, um, her iris and pupil at the same time, I could do them both or I can create, uh, create separate masks for each one. Either way. Uh, so if I uncheck this box that says create two separate masks, then it will make one combined mask of the lips and eyes and whatever I do will change the lips and eyes. Or I'm saying, hey, while I'm at it, I know I want these separate things. So go ahead and give me uh, uh, iris and pupil, lips, teeth, and hair. Give me all of those as create four separate masks. That way I don't have to keep coming back to this, doing them one at a time. Okay, so let's go ahead and click create. And there it is. It gave me my four separate masks. So I know this one is hair. I can tell by the icon. I don't know what this one is. This one looks like might be teeth. And this one. This one looks like lips. That's, yeah, that's the pupils. Okay. I'll just say eyes. All right. And this one is lips. Okay. So now that I got them all separated out and know which one's which, I can click on lips, for example. And now that I got lips selected, I can go ahead and go to town on changing the color just that easily. So, um, yeah, it, it's <laughs> this is game changing. I remember when I first saw 2.0 and I thought that was game changing. This couldn't be more game changing for not having to do all that work manually. So um, whatever it is you need to select, you've got a way to do it. If you want to brighten someone's teeth, you've got a teeth selector. You can uh, either bump up the exposure, don't go too far. Uh, you can reduce the yellowing, you can do whatever you need to do, her teeth look great. So I don't even really need to do this, but just letting you know that, again, it selected the teeth. If I were to go into the... Um, to her eye, which is her pupils, and we were to zoom in on that, and I were to just play with the colors, uh, I get the pupil color changing very nicely. So the masking that's automatic is saving people, photographers, people that use Lightroom, 
hours and hours and hours of manually painting or manually trying to go to, to do something or just saying, screw it, I'll just go to Photoshop and do it where I can. So much easier uh, to do this stuff today than it ever was before. And to get unrealistic colors of eyes. Okay, uh, let's jump out of this. There we go. And 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 again, um, if you don't like something, you could just turn that mask off. You can delete the mask. You can turn the mask back on. You can add to the mask, subtract from the mask, so forth and so on. Okay. Um, <laughs> and I didn't show hair, but her there's her hair. There's not much I can do with it because it is what it is. But uh, yes, it's, the hair mask is not awesome, but it did select the hair. So if I were just maybe just darkening the hair a little bit, there we go. Kind of make it look a little more, fill in the shadows just a little bit more of the hair I could. Um, separate mask or title, lips, teeth. Yeah, it would be nice. Um, Lewis, you're right. If, if you selected hair, it should title the mask hair. I agree. I will give that to the team to uh, hopefully implement. Because, yeah, there's no reason for it not to. If you if you selected hair, it should maybe call it hair person one, whatever. But it, it, it should name the mask what you selected. And I totally agree with that. All right, next up. Uh, don't, don't. Okay, so combining masks, using two or three masks together to achieve an effect or result. So, for example, I've got um, this situation here where... The, the bride, I'm assuming she's a bride carrying a bouquet with a, looks like a wedding dress on, but the, we'll call her the bride, is facing away from the camera, which is fine. But what's distracting in this photo is the wall has the same amount of light as she does. So typically you would want your subject to stand out when you're lighting. And this is just spillovers. Whoever shot this, the light spilled over onto the wall. So I would want to darken the wall without necessarily darkening her because she's properly exposed. I just don't want the wall as bright as it is. Now, again, I don't want to have to paint the wall, lower the exposure of the wall. That's too much work. So I'm going to do the next best thing. I'm going to go to develop, mask, and this time, so this isn't an AI thing. This isn't a select subject because she's the subject. This isn't a select background because the whole wall is the background. This is just kind of, I want to select a certain part of the image. So, and I want to do it gradually. So that's what the linear gradient would be great for in this case. So I'm going to go ahead and just um, click and drag from the left to the right. I'm sorry, from the right to the left. And that will, that's kind of the area I want to cover. Now, the problem is when I drop the exposure, it'll be the heaviest on the right going to the left. When I drop the exposure, Look at what happens to her right side as well. Her right side gets that same treatment. That's what I didn't want to happen. So keep in mind, you've got a mask called wall. And um, we now want, you know what? Hey, I just, I'm going to take your suggestion even further. It's AI. So it should know that I painted on a wall. So maybe propose that name as the map. I, I don't know. Anyway. All right. So anyway, um, we, got the wall, we got the wall selected and it's doing a great job darkening the wall, but it's also affecting her. So what I'm going to do with that wall mask is subtract from it. So when you click on a mask, it's either on or off. When I click on it, I get an add and subtract button down below. That add and subtract button. Ooh, I didn't know that gave me intersect. Great. That add and subtract button um, is just as it, the name implies. It lets you add or subtract from the mask you have. So I'm going to hit subtract because I want to subtract her from this mask. Don't affect her by this. Subtract, and then it says subtract using what method? You want to brush her out? No. You want to select the sky? No, because there's no sky. Select subject? Yeah, that would probably be the best one. Select subject. And that will select her and automatically exclude her from the mask because you did subtract. So it just selected her as a subject, automatically excluded from the mask. Lighting of her doesn't change. Now you're only affecting the wall with what you do to exposure. So you, whatever you do to the exposure, nothing's happening to her. 
So that way I can just dial it down to where I need it to be, to where I can still kind of see that it's a wall there, but your eye immediately goes back to her because um, it, oh, don't worry, we're coming to intersect. <laughs> I showed intersect. I showed that, I didn't realize that when you add and subtract, you have an op, if you hold down your option or alt key, it shows the intersect button. We're gonna get to that in a minute. Anyway, um, it will do what I said. It will basically subtract her from the mask. She's not being affected. Now it's just the, the wall. Great. All right, let's, um, <laughs> that's where we're going next is actually intersect. So, I have a couple of these I want to do intersect on because intersect's one of those concepts that might take two or three examples for you to get your head around it. Uh, what is intersect? What is intersect? Oh my God, intersect. <laughs> so, we're doing it now. What's intersect? All right, for example, the best way to for me to describe intersect Similar to what I just did with the wall and subtracting her out, it's like a mask within a mask. That's exactly what intersect is. And remember we added remove or select background with one click and it was basically replacing what you used to do with two clicks, unless you want to still do click two clicks, go right ahead. But it would replace the uh, select subject and then having to invert and then um, to get the background. Intersect is doing subtract and invert. That's technically what it's doing. Um, and that was, uh, Kevin, that, that was an example of doing intersect manually, like not doing the feature, but doing it manually. So I, I didn't do an invert. So it's really technically not an intersect. Let me give you an example of when you would want to use it. I want to change his blue shirt. If I were to say, oh, it's blue, use color range. Nobody else is wearing blue, should be easy, right? So let's go in and go to develop and go to color range and do, um, uh, go to color range and say, oh yeah, I want to do a blue shirt. But see how some of the background's being selected because it's, the shirt isn't a nice solid blue. So, so Lightroom's thinking, hey, that blue's kind of similar to the background, and if I were to change the exposure of his shirt, the background's changing too. So in this case, this is a, a this is a perfect um, case for intersect. Let me show you how I would do it. Undo or just get rid of these masks. Get rid of the mask. Delete all masks. Great. So we're starting over. Now, remember, I said if there are people in it, it's automatically going to select people. So there's person one. Hang on, let me zoom out so you can see them all. Person one, person two, person three. So they're all there. Great. So what I would do instead of starting with the, the shirt, I start with the select the person. Because that'll give me him completely isolated and not the background and not anyone else. See where I'm going with this? So I select him. Entire person, same thing as select subject, but in this case, select subject would be all three. That's why person's better. And create mask. Great. So now it's a mask of him, but I only want his shirt. This is where intersect comes in. So instead of me having to subtract, object, invert, and try and get just his shirt, there's an option if you, uh, and by the way, we'll, we'll call this shirt because that's what it's ultimately going to be. There's an option that says, if you go to the little three dot menu here, there's an option called intersect and intersect will let you pick what you want to intersect with. So that's what intersect, that's how you get to intersect, intersect mask with, in this case, now I can do color range because now I'm doing color range, but I've already isolated him. So the background won't be touched because I'm doing an intersect within the first mask. So intersect is only, if you already have a mask, you're intersecting with that mask with another selection method. So in this case, select color range. Great, so now I can go in and do the exact same thing I did before, select just the blue. And look, his face just didn't get selected anymore. 
because I've told in the place under his arm got selected, everything got selected. So now when I mess with his shirt, nothing else is changing. Not the background, not her, not her hand, not his face, not anything else. So just remember, intersect, and the reason I'm really explaining what it's doing is for a reason. Intersect is subtract and invert, if that makes sense. Because if I had just subtracted the shirt, then I'd have to invert that mask to get the shirt back. So, mind blown, reverb mic. All right, that's what I love to hear. The, why am I explaining that three times, that it's subtract and, and invert? Because in Lightroom, not Lightroom Classic, the other Lightroom, this Lightroom, Because in Lightroom, there is no intersect. So if I bring up that same photo and I do the same thing and I do the same, um, oh, it already has the mask because <laughs> it's the same photo. All right, let's do it on a different person. Let's do it on a different person. Let's go ahead and create a new mask. And I do it on the guy with the red shirt. I do a people mask first. It detects people. I was like, wait, the mask is already there because it synced it already. I don't know why it's taking so long to do to detect people. It should be instantaneous. There we are. All right, so I do the guy on the right. Great. And I create that mask. Great. But now I don't, there's no, they, they did add it. Never mind. <laughs> this wasn't there before. So you would have had to do a, I don't have to explain it anymore because it's here. So you do it the exact same way now. But before this was added to Lightroom, you would have to have done uh, subtract and then invert. I think you still have to on mobile. So that might be the only place left you still have to do it unless they've snuck that in on mobile as well. But no, it's, it's here as well. So intersect mask using, voila, the Lightroom team does it again. I don't have to explain it the hard way. Okay, great. So now you got intersect on both products, no matter which one you use. So that is an now. Let me give you. A, you thought you or who reverb Mike? You thought your 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 mind was blown with that example. Let me give you a better one. Let's go here. If I just wanted to change her red dress, piece of cake, select subject, in, intersect, color range, done. I don't want to. I don't select her at all. I want all that green. Yeah, all of it, <laughs> but not the wall, not the other stuff. So let me give you another example of how intersect can be used. I'm gonna go back to the old way of doing it. I'm gonna go to mask. I'm gonna do brush and I could probably get away with color range, but let's say, let's pretend she had on a green dress. So I'm gonna do mask, I'm just gonna do a big mask. Oh, I'm sorry, brush. I'm using brush, right? Yeah, I'm using brush. Oh, you know what I don't want though? Uh, undo, that's what was throwing me off. Mask and brush, but I don't want auto mask on. I just want big brush strokes, there we go. All right, so I'm being very careful as you can tell. I'm being super careful. Oop, don't get the wall, oh, too late. Oh, don't get her hair. Oh, too late. Don't get her. Oh, too late. I'm being super careful. Get that little piece in there. Oops. Part of her selected. Oh, no. Oh, her hair. Oh, no. Oops, the wall again. Oops. This is this is why brushing is traditionally bad. Because you're just going to get it on stuff you didn't want to get it on. All right. So now I definitely got all the green selected. All right, but not, I didn't want that green up there. So that's another example. So now that I got all that green selected, and I definitely overpainted on the wall, overpainted all around her, I messed up. But I don't have to be that careful with intersect. So now we'll go to, um, we'll just call this one vines. We'll go to our new vines mask and we'll do intersect. And we'll say intersect using whatever you want, but in this case, I'm just gonna do color range. 
And now I'll just go over here and pick, uh, I don't know, this leaf. And boom, it subtracts out. Hang on, I should subtract out the stuff I didn't want. Yeah, it did. Okay, there we go. So now I can change those leaves without it impacting the trees, her, her dress, her hair, any of that, because I did a just a broad brush with intersect, and intersect using color range is basically saying, and all that messy brushing, just pick the green. That's basically what I did. So that's another use for intersect. So I've seen uh, Julianne Cost, for example, does a nice job where she's got some trees growing across a mountaintop. And she'll brush the heck out of the trees and then use intersect with linear gradient or one of the other color luminance range or whatever. Just the trees are selected. So it's fun when you start thinking of all the ways you can use this. Okay, next up. Let's let's get out of here. Let's go to Photoshop. I could spend the whole day in Lightroom, but I just remember I got some Photoshop to show you too. Okay, uh, jump back over to this image. Let's start with what I call the legacy tools, just quickly. Photoshop wasn't always Photoshop, just that we know today and love. It wasn't just like Lightroom wasn't always the new masking 2.0 and 3.0 that we know and love now. Um, so back in the day, you had all kinds of, you know, horrible ways to select things in Photoshop. I say that now because back then that's all we had, but today we have much better ways. So for example, someone mentioned the magic wand. The magic wand selects based on color range. So, or the selects based on, yeah, based on contiguous colors that are similar. So if I click the black in this, um, this soccer ball, oh, it didn't do a good enough job because this part wasn't as dark as that part. Then I'd have to go up and either try and keep clicking or go up and adjust the tolerance to make it more liberal to go in and grab more of it. This was the pain we lived. Oh, too much. Because all of this is white and that's not white enough. And so this was the problem with making selections back in the day is that it was a lot of, and by the way, it spilled out onto the background. So the whole background selected. This is the problem we had back in the day because these kind of tools were, you know, from the 80s, they were, or 90s, I should say, 90s. They were um, rudimentary. Oh, so I want the whole ball. Well, maybe I'll use the elliptical tool and I'll kind of guess where the corner is and I'll kind of drag around it and I'll hold down the shift key to make it perfectly circle, perfect circle. And oh, I didn't guess right, so I'd have to pick it up and move it. Oh, I made it too big or too small. Yeah, we don't want to do any of that anymore. <laughs> Now, we didn't take those tools away. So people that still have workflows based on those tools can still use them all day, every day, but there are much better ways of doing selections than the legacy, what I call the legacy selection methods. So for example, one of the ways is um, this new, newer quick selection tool. So the quick selection tool was like Magic Wand 4.0. So it was like really a big jump from what the Magic Wand used to do. And you use it like a brush. So for example, I can make it bigger and I can just, I can click and look, it selected that. I can click again. It already set, it's set to add and I keep clicking or I can just drag it. And as I drag it around, eventually if I hit all the spots that are different, like that and that and that and that. Okay, great. So now I got the whole ball selected. So much faster much, much easier than the magic wand ever was. So yeah, <laughs> that's just way quicker. And then they, the, the Photoshop team is never resting on the laurels. That wasn't quick enough. Deselect the new object selection tool. The object selection tool uses AI to figure out what the objects are in your scene. Oh, there's a ball, click, done. That's the object selection tool. It just it selects an out, it figures out what the objects are. And even if it doesn't, even if it didn't guess the ball right, I can still click and drag a rectangle around it just like I did in Lightroom and have it figure out, oh, you must want the ball. Done. So um, this is, you know, again, we, we don't use those old methods that much anymore. 
All right, let's go here. Now, um, in this case, um, this, is, this will be another case where I might want to start with maybe something like quick, quick Select. And just giving you another Quick Select example. Quick Select is, as the name implies, is quick, not necessarily accurate. We don't call it the Accurate Selection Tool. We call it the Quick Selection Tool. I was holding down my Option key or Alt key to subtract. My Shift key to add. And Option to subtract down here. And it kind of learns and adapts. And it does, you know, good job. Okay, great. Zorro, yeah. All right, next up. This is another example of the object selection tool. So not only can it figure out what these objects are and just click on them, hold down your shift key and keep clicking to get different ones selected way faster than any other method, this one's going to blow your mind because this one's kind of a hidden one. I'm in the object selection tool, and I'm going to right click on the layer or the background in this case. And there is a mask all objects option that you would never know is there because you'd have to be in that tool to see it. Mask all objects, and it will create a mask for every single object in the scene and add it to your layers panel. So now if you need to get a particular object, it don't, won't name them, it doesn't know which one's which, but you can just uh, hold on to your command key or control key on Windows and just uh, select the objects. So, boom, all of them masked quickly, individually, boom, done. Can't beat that. No way you could have done it that fast in any other method. Okay, um, to deselect is always Command D or Control D on Windows. Next up, the object selection tool also works on people. So we could say select subject, but I'm just gonna go ahead and drag it around the person. And it even tries to do a good job on hair, and we'll get into that in just a minute. All right, uh, please wear your mask. <laughs> All right, next up, let's go into this one. Now, this is a challenging one. This one's one a user submitted to me a while back. Uh, they want to change the color of these purple balls, but they're uh, try, imagine trying to select those and not get the little spaces in between the, the wires. So uh, Photoshop has always had a select, or always, but a long time ago, had select color range. This is a legacy selection method, but it still works. So select color range lets you click on a color and you could hold down your shift key and add to that color and keep clicking that to get more of that color and get different variations of that color to get them all selected so i'm just holding down my shift key and keep clicking and then you can adjust the fuzziness which is a, a weird way of saying the range uh, so more will give you more of it less will give you less of it and then once you're happy and again, you won't know because this is legacy, so you get a little preview. You don't get a preview on, oh, wait, selection preview? Uh, grayscale, let me see what that looks like. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. We do get that on the image. Cool. All right, I take that back. I take my criticism back. All right, <laughs> there we go. Click OK. And that will give me all of those selections. And what can I do with them? I can go in and add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And then I can go in and simply change their color to something else. So that is still effective for doing this kind of work. All right, next up. Um, let's go in. I want to get this one in because I'm going to run out of time. So we know we have select subject, right? That was my focus area. Let's go to... This one, this is a good one for select subject. We showed this one uh, in the intro class. So if I do select subject on this, the problem is, what is this the subject? Is it the kicker and the ball or just the kicker? In this case, light, or I'm sorry, Photoshop thought it was just the person, not the ball. And this, this is a, another hidden one. I'm gonna deselect. I'm gonna switch to a selection tool. Any selection tool that gives me the select, select subject button. There's a new pull down. And that pull down device, meaning it does the selection based on your device, or cloud gives you more detailed results. When I choose cloud, it's a one-time thing, so you have to do it each time unless you go change your preference. Now when I click select subject, it got the ball, it got more of him, it did it a better job. So if select subject's not nailing it for you, try select subject using the cloud base with all the machines in the cloud to do a better selection to get you that. All right, uh, next, uh, we get a kick out of Photoshop. I like that, that's cute. 
All right, next up, this is a oldie but goodie. And this is, uh, we've got two left in maybe one minute. Um, this is an oldie but goodie, but select focus area. So the shallow depth of field is the all the green in the background. The birds and the branch are the uh, foreground. I got a little redraw problem here. I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK. And look, it selected the, the, the branch and the birds just perfectly. So it selected what was in focus, focus area. All right, last but not least, let's open up this one. And let's put uh, somebody on it very quickly, very quickly. I've done this image before. Uh, we're going to move her legs down because she doesn't have the bottom of her feet showing. I'll make her a little bigger. And there we are. And then we're going to say done. No, we got one more thing to do. Select subject. Great. Selects her. And then we're going to choose select and mask, which is this button right here. And that's it. It cuts her out using all the AI features that are built in. You could go in and refine the edge if it didn't do it with a brush. We can do choose to de decontaminate colors, does a much better job, and there she is. No background, and the background's been masked, and that's my day, that's my show. So with that said, oh, cheers everyone, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one. I'm out of time today, hopefully you got something out of this. Enjoy, stay tuned for more.